you all, all welcome to Kenya. Um, Mr. Gilbert Hobo, Director General of the International Labor Organization, Mr. Kwasi Adu Amankwa, General Secretary of ITUC Af Africa, Brother Moody, Gairo, President of ITUC Africa, Sister Martha Molema, Deputy President, ITUC Africa, my good friend Francis Atuoli, Secretary General of KOTU in Kenya, my dear sister uh, Jacqueline Mugo, the CEO of K uh, FKE, Federation of Kenya Employers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to Nairobi. Um, I know the Chairman General, Reverend JB, has harassed you quite a bit, that you must clap this way, you must do this way. It is true, uh, we are village mates, and uh, he is not very objective when he deals with me, he's biased, <laughs> so forgive him. And. Uh, let me also confirm what uh, Francis Atoli has said, that we are a robust democratic country. We, <clears throat> we have our differences, but they are not personal. We have different viewpoints, but we are gentlemen enough and ladies enough to accept that a good idea must always give way to a better idea. We all believe that it is only fools who don't change their minds. And that is why I am delighted to join you at this fifth Congress of the International Trade Union Confederation in Africa and deeply honored to have this opportunity to address this very auspicious gathering. Before I proceed, I take this opportunity to welcome you all to our country, Kenya, and to our capital city of Nairobi. We are very hospitable people who take our moral and cultural duty of welcoming visitors very, very seriously. Besides, this country hosts archeological sites that have been acclaimed globally as the cradle of humankind. So every visitor who comes to Kenya from everywhere, Europe, America, Asia, the rest of this continent, when they come to Kenya, they are coming home. So welcome home. Thank you. And this is why we have been championing the elimination of national boundaries as barriers to integration, engagement between people, enterprises, and advocating for open skies throughout Africa and implementing a visa-free policy to make our brothers and sisters throughout the world to feel at home here in Kenya. <laughs> Additionally, Kenya is a delightful tourist attraction in every aspect. Even this city has its own share of magical experiences, including a very close canopy. We have a fence, but sometimes they break out of the fence. So when you do your morning walk, you might find a lion. Please be careful. They are not tamed. They are wild. And I hope you will find time to enjoy magical Kenya in her full splendor. Karibuni sana, Kenya. <clears throat> 
Thank you very much, Brother Francis Atwoli, for your invitation and for your many kind words. It is indeed true that I have been available and ready to participate in matters pertaining to Kenyan workers, and I've honored your invitations to be with you at important events. But remember, uh, Francis, you didn't say everything. <laughs> Maybe I will add on that too. You remember we had a conversation when I came and I, and I explained, I took time to explain to you and the leadership of our Kenyan workers that you not only represent the people who are working, but you also represent the jobless. Otherwise, the people who don't have jobs will have nobody to represent them. And I explained to you that I am going to work on a program to have more people to have jobs so that you have a bigger number to represent. And I took a long time to explain what we are going to do to create job opportunities so that we can have more workers, more people earning a decent wage. And that is the reason why I told you there are three things that I am going to do in my tenure. That number one, we will have a robust housing program. Not because we are looking for houses necessarily, but because housing creates millions of jobs. And I want to report to you, Secretary General and the leadership of the labor movement here, that in the last eight months, we have created 120,000 jobs from our housing plan. I will encourage you to go and recruit those people to be members of your movement. <laughs> Number two, we are also going to create more jobs around the digital space, the technology space. As I talk to you, Parliament today is passing the NGCDF bill that will create opportunity for ICT hubs in every ward in Kenya because we are seeking to create digital jobs in every village in Kenya. Again, so that we can have more members of this movement. And number three, I was having a conversation with the Director General, and he was explaining to me how he found a conversation in Berlin about Kenya's engagement with the German government on bilateral labor agreement that will facilitate more Kenyans to work in Germany as we work on our bilateral labor agreements so that we can make the labor or migrant workers not a problem but a solution. So again, we are working in that space to increase the number of people, whether they are working locally, whether they are working in foreign, and whether they are working in governments work together. I was very pleased to meet Luca earlier. Luca uh, Triangle. Sorry, I gave you the other name. And uh, I was fascinated by his name. Until he came to uh, talk here, and his first, his first uh, point was about people striking. So I started to wonder, has this man come to organize a strike in Nairobi? <laughs> But Atwali told me, no, no, he's just talking about the principle. So I said, okay. But let me say, Luca, you are welcome to Kenya, and uh, your name is very fascinating. <laughs> the reason for this is that our governing mandate, which is based on the bottom-up economic transformation agenda, identifies the radical en enhancement of productivity of labor 
as the engine for our nation's economic takeoff. The best way to stimulate economic vigor, increase incomes, enhance savings, and promote investment is by focusing on men and women who work. The only way to reduce poverty and inequality is by attending to workers and their well-being. To ensure that workers have decent jobs, safe and dignified working environment, a fair regime of income and remuneration, which rewards skill and productivity, a robust social support, including health care and dignified retirement, and a macroeconomic environment which effectively manages the cost of living through sustainable interventions and especially support for greater production. And it is the same, I made a commitment that we are going to enhance our productivity and our production, especially in agriculture. I'm very happy that this year our agricultural production has gone up by 40% because of the interventions we are making so that we can walk the journey in real numbers of reducing the cost of living. You remember I also <clears throat> promised you that health is not going to be a preserve and is not going to be a luxury for those who can afford. Our universal health coverage this time round is going to take care of those who can afford and is going to make sure that those who cannot afford are carried along by government spending on them. <clears throat> It is also very clear that our bottom-up economic transformation agenda is also a radically pro-labor and boldly worker-centric program of action aimed at creating millions of jobs and lifting tens of millions of Kenyans out of poverty into the middle class. Every intervention, as I have enumerated, under the priority sectors which form the pillars of our plan testifies to this. We are therefore highly committed and interested in sustaining a dynamic relationship with the leadership of the national labor movement in order to keep abreast of the aspirations and of our workers and the most salient concerns as it pertains to their development and their well-being. I also congratulate you for your successful effort to host this Congress which is a tremendous honor for our country and which demonstrates your vision for the labor movement, commitment to serve workers throughout the continent, and your highly developed networking and consensus building credentials. Our bottom-up economic transformation agenda is not worker-centric by accident. Kenya is a worker's country. Our freedom struggle is closely tied with a struggle by Africans for freedom to work in safety and dignity, whether on their land or in industries and other places. Given that colonialism based on forced labor was slavery in all but name, our freedom struggle was always about the fundamental right of Africans to have their personal dignity honored and their economic productivity acknowledged. This is why our foremost celebrated freedom fighters were also labor union leaders and activists, and you know that. Today, we are governed under a constitution which not only identifies human dignity, equity, social justice, inclusiveness, and equality among our national values and principles of governance, it also recognizes labor relations and social security as human rights and fundamental freedoms. By setting out the respective rights and obligations of workers, employers, and by implication government under Article 21 of our Constitution, the right to fair labor practices implicitly reflects the tripartism 
which forms the foundation of labor relations. The Labor Relations Act, which brings out this principle in greater detail to guide daily interactions in the workplace, is a case in point. It is clear, then, that social dialogue and tripartism are fundamental for sound industrial relations reflected in robust collective bargaining agreements and similar instruments and critical to the realization of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda in terms of social justice, job creation, and the rapid attainment of shared prosperity among us Kenyans. With 87 registered trade unions in active operation, it is evident that Kenya recognizes the place of trade unions in defining our national character as a people who are not afraid to work their way to freedom and prosperity. We are, above all things, a nation at work. This being the case, we are fully seized of our mandate to advance the social dialogue agenda in honor of the solidarity with which our labor movement has promoted, sustained, and defended our freedom and our development. The full implementation of the NSSF Act 2013 was certainly overdue, requiring urgent action in order to guarantee dignified retirement for workers and the protection of retirees from old age poverty, as I have enumerated earlier. It is important that our social security regime attains a standard that exceeds the minimum established by the International Labor Organization under Convention Number 102 of 1952. And I think we are heading there. Our determination to actualize the best standards of worker protection and welfare has inspired us to endeavor to align our labor policy framework with all international labor standards that have been ratified by Kenya, including the upgrading of our occupational safety and health, as well as, worker, as well as work injury benefits regime. As we do this, we urge closer collaboration with the International Training Center for International Labor Organization for purposes of benchmarking and capacity building in order to make our labor movements responsive, dynamic, and effective. The work done so far in the education and health sector points to a promising future for social dialogue and greater improvement in terms of promoting alternative dispute resolution to ease the burden on the employment and labor relations courts system. We have launched the third generation county decent work program, which is our basic policy framework for the International Labor Organization's Global Jobs Pact 209. We believe that decent jobs lie at the heart of human well-being, economic transformation, and overall prosperity. It is logical, therefore, that this program therefore thrives or drives social dialogue to promote the actualization of our bottom-up economic transformation agenda. I'm encouraged by the labor movement's attention to the activity in the area of climate action and fully agree with your proposition that a just transition must consider the socioeconomic interests of communities in formulating policies in response to climate change and ensure that workers are not disproportionately prejudiced by mitigation and adaptation measures. <clears throat> In other words, sustainability and social justice must go together. Otherwise, we will leave other people behind. As a gathering of the Pan-African Trade Union leadership, I am confident that you are also in touch with the seismic movement of the African continental free trade area, that you are taking a role in making sure that this unprecedented free trade area delivers its promise of a better future for workers and does so in full. As you do this, emphasize the necessity of 
free movement throughout our continent and the need to collaborate in transforming Africa under ACFTA into a vast territory of opportunity and to facilitate labor migration to connect knowledge and skills with these opportunities and others everywhere, including abroad. Uh, let me say this, we have, we, we have been pushing as, 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 as leaders in this continent that it doesn't make sense for us to erect barriers and create unnecessary roadblocks of movement of people, of movement of goods, ideas, services around our continent. The people who taught us about visas they themselves have abandoned visas. <laughs> if, yes, if you go to Europe, where we learned about this visa thing, Europe today, 27 countries, 450 million people have abandoned visa among themselves. We in Africa are still struggling with visas. You are blocking this guy from coming, you are blocking this state from coming, you are doing that. Now, if, if those who taught us to erect barriers and create hurdles and have visas have abandoned it, what business do we have to have this visa business? And that is why... <laughs> and that is why, by the end of this year, none of you will require a visa to come to Kenya. <clears throat> I... <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I know very well from my interactions with you that you are highly interested in the various unfolding scenarios in terms of technological advancement and how they affect the future of work. I had the opportunity of speaking to this subject in Geneva in June. I am aware of the passion and motivation with which you are engaged. We are interested in your input in, in so far as technological changes, the expanding informal sectors, changing methods and structures of work methods, demographic change in the world of work, and finally, climate change. We are in an era defined by constant change, and it is our duty to keep up with it. I am confident that this Congress will live up to expectations by driving workers' agenda to the center of pan making very long speeches, but very passionate about what they are saying. And uh, you truly represent workers. I, I, can, I, I have a feeling. So thank you very much. God bless you. And my very best wishes. Asante Nisan. Thank you. I would request His Excellency to remain at the dais. Thank you, sir. I will invite His Excellency Adi Dias, Your Excellency Sir. May we be seated kindly? Your Excellency, kindly join me. Waziri, on stage, Mr. Tuoli, uh, the Secretary General, the DG ILO, also to come on stage. Uh, Mr. Modi, Giro, uh, Luke Triangle, and Mr. Kwasi. We we'll have one photo, and then as we are taking the photo, we we'll organize for the awards, and I will invite Mr. Kwasi, who will be doing the list. But for now, a photo first. So thank you so much. We are done. I will invite Mr. Kwesi, Kwasi kindly to take lead at the awards as they are being awarded by His Excellency.
We do come and line up. Yeah. They are coming in. Yeah. Call number one. Um, these are awards that, uh, Your Excellency, we are giving to trade unionists and other collaborators okay. who have worked with us all these years. Okay. Many of them.